Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, y'all. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Um, if there was any question in your mind why the program is called the Mental House and why we are dealing with our mental stuff, these few stories will give you a little um, a, a semblance of why. Hold on, people. Okay, family, I'm back. I'm back. Anyway, whatever side of the diaspora that y'all on, y'all know we going through it over here in America. And um, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, our responsibility is to stand down. If you a black person in America today, your responsibility is to stand down and step back. And see what that uh, is going to be. There's an old song that uh, they used to sing in church. It said, uh, See what this is going to be. Believe I pray on. See what this is going to be. I believe I run on. See what this is going to be. See what this is going to be when these insurgents, when these traitorous, um, <laughs> terrorists finish their mayhem. Because this is just the beginning. This is also the exploitation, the examination, the no more lying and denying, the racism, the double standard, the inequality that you try to mask over. And this, like again, there's no more of that. This is who we are. This is who we have been. Uh, since you stole the land from a Native American, since you stole slaves, uh, in people, free people, and brought them over uh, for free enterprise. And then you allowed immigrants to come in and you gave them land grants and you took the, uh, 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 the land from the Native and relegated him to... Um, Reservations never gave us a 40 acre or a mule <laughs> and no money and just told us we free after 300, 200 years of, uh, of slavery and then just let us go and say, okay, now you're free with nothing. And we've been trying to survive and struggle in America since then. So I don't really understand what those people are mad about, those entitled um, some people want to call them, uh, you know, I made fun too in reference and I call them uh, deliverance. <laughs> I'll call them uh, deliverance, uh, incestuous individual. However, on the real side, as y'all see, these are some of your CEOs, some of your fire uh, uh, department heads or um, police the uh, officers, uh, congressmen, because white supremacy is a snake. It's a filthy cancer. And it has spread it just like Dr. Francis Crest Wilson. See, white people, we've always had people who've tried to warn you that what you were doing, because we've always been the moral compass of America. And how, in fact, how can you beat somebody so bad? And whip them from sun up to sundown, and be so abusive that they cannot see the heart of you. Black people know y'all like the back of their hands. We know y'all. We know what you're capable of. We know what you have been capable of because you've done it to us. You've exploited us. You've sold our children from up under us. So we know how cruel you can be. That's why it's very insulting when I hear some of these people coming out saying, this is not who we are. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just trying to tell you state of fact. So, hopefully I won't uh, have a lot of other subscribers uh, uh, taken away by YouTube. They're taking them away. My subscribers away in droves. And they're, um, I don't know what's going on with my videos. They come out, they don't have volume. I have to redo them or I go back and see them and they do have volume. 
and then I have to reload them again, but that's okay. Because at the end of the day, I'm just trying to tell the truth from my perspective and our a lot of um, black people's perspective. But that don't mean that we're you know, we're monolithic. You know, we have different um, expressions of our disgust with America. And, it, and so with that being said, I'm just trying to explain to you that we know y'all. We don't understand what you could be so angry about that you would storm that building um, and say that just because you don't think the voting is fair. <sighs> Especially when we've sat through so many uh, voting cycles where we weren't even allowed to vote, where our vote was suppressed where we had to accept and put up with who you said was the president and hope that they would throw us one crumb, and which they very rarely did. But you think that you got an, um, a reason to storm the government. Dr. Francis Cress said, education, economics, entertainment, Labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Those are all our, uh, all the components of our daily lives that we participate in. And those are all the components of our daily lives that white supremacy has infiltrated. So I believe still in the principles of America. That if she was to be true. Like Dr. King said that. What she said on paper. This would be the most beautiful. Place in the world. It would be like paradise. Different races. Different ideology. Different cultures. Not maybe necessarily. Loving everything everyone says. But respected enough. Respected each other enough. To allow us. To be the individuals that we are. But to come together under one roof and say, hey, I'm an American. Because, see, let me say something. Believe it or not, I'm not going to give up my American citizenship. And I'm proud of it. Because I know that being an American affords me to go anywhere I want to throughout the diaspora. Without stopping here and there, here and there, here and there. Um, this is the Cadillac of passports when you come from America. It's the, I mean, there are people that's looking at us and saying, well, are you well? I've heard that a lot from my African brothers and sisters. Are you well? And I say, hell no. Hell no. But at the end of the day, I know how to eat the meat and throw away the bone. I throw away the bone of everything that's negative that America represents for me, my family, my generation. Everything that's negative, I know what it is. However, I don't let and I don't let my generations under me forget the devastation that had been perpetuated against us by the, a dominant European society. Never. But my ancestors built this under duress. And with that being said, I have just as much right to have dual citizenship and to take advantage of everything that it means to be an American. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, uh, even when certain circumstances and situations aren't the easiest, this is what we have to do. So now I'm just, you know, I, I just wanted to get that out there. And I had to say that because, you know, I think it's important for us to know that. Um, but these next few stories. Should let you know just how crazy it is um, and just what we're up against in terms of mentally ill people. Um, there was a guy in Wisconsin, unfortunately, that took a newborn baby and he's going to be charged as an adult. Kloppenberg, I believe his last name is. Um, yes, he was Caucasian and 
I'm glad he's going to be charged as an adult. They had a baby. They didn't. They wasn't too, uh, you know, scared to not have sex. So they made a baby. And when the baby came, the guy took his little baby, naked baby, and took her out and put her in a snow-covered tree branch and shot her twice in the head and left her. Um, we're breeding them real young, young crazies, not just old crazies, but young crazies. I don't know what will possess the teenager to execute a baby that way because he was afraid he could have dropped it off at the fire station. In fact, that's how he got caught because he kept telling those lies, kept saying the baby went here, the baby went there. Ultimately, they killed the baby. Now, I don't give a damn if the baby was white. I'm just talking about the hideous act that will make you even kill a baby and then be so cruel. Put the baby out in the snow and on in a snow-covered tree and then shoot it? What the? F okay. Let's move on. Because a lot of y'all notice that the, uh, there's a Kansas City woman uh, who strangled a pregnant mother and cut her baby out of her womb over a decade ago, but she's been put to death now. And it's the first time that uh, the U.S. federal government executed a woman since 1953. You know, this story is so damn crazy. It is one of the reasons why I, I'm very skeptical about having uh, people come to my home um, you know, even when I am selling these puppies, I would much rather have them delivered to you when you pick them, uh, because it's this kind of stuff that is just insanity. Um, in 2004, she drove from Kansas to Missouri to purchase a dog from Bobby Stinnett, a 23-year-old dog breeder who was eight months pregnant. Montgomery strangled the unexpected mother and cut her fetus from her womb before she attempted to pass the child who survived off as her own. Victoria Joe, the baby in question we talked about, she's 16 years old now and she hasn't spoken publicly since the horrible, terrific ordeal. I can't blame her. I can't blame her. All these assaults against children. Um, and believe it or not, these people <laughs> wrote to Trump and um, a lot of the other right-wingers to see if they could get her state, uh, executed state, her state, ex her state, get her, a, grant her a state of execution. Didn't work. Supreme Court denied the uh, court order and request to Trump 74 from family supporters and her attorney. So they, they put her down. They put her down. These atrocities to children um, really, really show how deranged we are as a society because the most basic instinct that God gives you is to protect your children. That's a carnal instinct. From the dog to the bear to the lion to any animal. A fowl in the sky, any creepy animal crawling the earth to protect their young. And in Texas, I got a, a mom who uh, tossed a dead two-year-old into a lake. And then dressed life-size doll to look just like her daughter that she throwed in, in the lake. Um, um, 
I don't know, y'all. What y'all think about this? What do y'all think about a society that treats its seniors and its baby the way we do ours? Do you think that that society is on the brink of collapse? Um, so, and can it be fixed? Forget, forget the other stuff you see going on around you. How many signs can you see that we're on the brink of collapse? I don't know. I wait for y'all thoughtful, intelligent opinions because y'all always bring them to me. And I would love to hear them. So, I'm going to sit back and wait. And if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.